say in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. May the word of life locate you here this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are welcome to the presence of God again this morning. And I will be teaching on securing good and lasting success. Amen. And there are different steps we are going to consider. And today the first step that we consider, when I, which I mentioned last week, is working in the covenant. Working in the covenant. What's covenant in America? Kidan, right? Kidan. Huh? Kidan. Okay. You have tried. You don't, you don't understand America as I do, so I forgive you. Amen? The word of the covenant. Hallelujah. Working in the covenant. Let me say this in starting. God is a God of secrets. The things of God are not just picked up anywhere. And God does not reveal his secrets to everybody. The Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. That's in chapter 5. Those that fear him. Those that respond to him. Those that submit to him. Those that walk with him. He shows them his secrets. Amen. And it is this secret of God that we operate by. Hallelujah. Remember Job. The Bible opened the book of Job. There was a man in the land of Ruth whose name was Job. He said the same was a man that feared God. Do you understand me? God introduced him as a man that does what? Fear God. As a man that eschewed evil. As a man that loved God. That's how God introduced Job first. God did not introduce Job first as the richest man in town. Do you get my point? He introduced Job first as what? A man that fears God. A man that hates evil. I will show you something further in this um, teaching about the covenant. I will get there. Many people put wealth and riches first. No, it is God first. It is your connection with God that generates wealth and riches. They are results. Remember we said many times before that the blessings of God are what? Rewards. Amen? Amen? Job was a man that feared God. And Job speaking in Job 29 and verse 4, he said, as I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. That means the greatness of Job was traced to the secrets. Are you following me? that God made available to him. May God open up his secrets to you also. Amen. Amen. His great secrets were revealed to him. And when it comes to the subject of success that we have been talking about, it's like building a house. It's like building a physical structure, a house. And a house, the foundation is very important. The foundation determines how far you can go. <laughs> I know people in Carlos village. This is what they do. Let me just expose. Maybe he has done it. They build, when they have 10,000 naira, they build 10,000 naira house. That's 10,000 naira house foundation. But all of a sudden, the man has become businessman. He has plenty of money now. He now comes to the house, he removes the roof. Are you following me? And put more story during it. But the, the foundation is just for. <laughs> you can like, well, that's how we do, right? The foundation is just for one story, but after some time, you make more money. You want to show everybody in the city, in the village, that yes, I've arrived. You just remove the roof and you put. <laughs> you put more stories. What's going to happen to the house? Trouble. Eh? So the foundation is very important. And that's why the Bible says, Psalm 11, I believe, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? Your salvation, your salvation foundation is very important. There are many people today, if they get money, you lose them. I mean, church wise. Why? Because their foundation in God is not solid. Are you following me? Even in life, many people, money changes them. Because they are more rooted in what they believe. You get my point? So, foundation is very, very important. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I'm trying to establish some things in this teaching today. Amen? 
I said amen. amen. There are spiritual laws. There are physical laws. There are what? Spiritual laws. There are physical laws. And these laws govern life. Spiritual laws are superior to physical laws. We know that. We've talked so much about laws. All along, the laws of nature governs nature. The laws of the spirit governs everything put together. When service starts 10 o'clock, I don't want to talk too much. Amen? Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. So we have those laws. The spiritual laws actually gave back to the physical laws. I'm sure you all have your notes this morning. I've sent them ahead. The Bible is written in Hebrews 11 and verse 3. It said, through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Amen? So that the things which we do see were not made of the things which do appear. The spiritual world gives birth to this physical world. And in the light of that, I will show us two cardinal laws. Two what? Cardinal. cardinal. How many of you have that read before? You know cardinal. Uh, those are the chiefs. Yeah. Two cardinal laws that governs it all, that the Bible made mention of for us. The word cardinal actually means of greatest importance or fundamental. So two fundamental laws. Come with me to Romans 8. Let's see these two fundamental laws. I'm still laying the foundation for us. Romans 8 verse 2. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Technology is really going far these days. <laughs> Amen. Two fundamental cardinal laws. Romans 8 2. Are you there? I need you to see. That's why I'm taking, taking my time. He says, For the law. Can I hear you say for the law? So you see, we're talking of law now, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Did you see that? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from what again? Another one called the law of sin and death. So you see those two cardinal laws. The law of the the law of sin and death raised since Adam gave it to Satan and has been ruling the world. But then a superior law okay, is called the law of the spirit of life. That's why the Bible says the second man is a second Adam is a quickening spirit, a life giving spirit. That's why you can be sick and he ingests life. That's why someone can be dead, he ingests life. You get my point? That's why a situation can be down and he turns it. Amen. The spirit of life. Can I hear you say the spirit of life? There is that law also of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is superior to the law of sin and death. It governs our oppression. Amen. That law was at work in Jesus Christ that even when they killed him, he rose up by himself. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's superior to everything Satan and the world has to offer. When you engage that law, he said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and if you are truly in Christ, is yours to operate by. Amen? Amen? If you are truly in Christ, that law, that superior law, is yours to operate by. Amen? So that you can rule above the elements of this life. You can rule situations and circumstances. You can determine the happenings of life. It's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It supersedes the law of sin and death. It is a higher spiritual law. And we engage the oppression of this law by our faith. By what? Your faith, my faith. That's why your faith puts you in command. Because when you put faith to work, it engages that law. You get my point? 
it engages that law. Where there is sickness, life flows in it takes place. When you engage that law by faith. When you engage that law. You don't have to allow life to hold you down. There is a higher order that gives you your freedom. Amen. Amen. I said there is a higher order that gives you your freedom. And that operates in the realm of faith. Faith empowers that to perform. Amen. So let's start by looking at the foundation for good and lasting success. I use those, I just told those two words carefully. Good and lasting. You know, good is, you know, but the lasting. It's not that you are three years ago you had, you are doing good and today you are not. You get my point? Good and lasting. Good and lasting. In the foundation for good and lasting success, the first of it is the covenant. The what? The covenant. The covenant. Isaiah 51, come with me to Isaiah 51 as well. I'm trusting God for time to show us some things today about the covenant. But of course, you have them all in your notes. I'm sure you got your notes yesterday, if you care to check it. Amen? Isaiah 51, verse 1. He says, Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. Note carefully. You that follow after righteousness. That means you that want to go with God. Huh? You that say you are a child of God, God is with me, fine. He said, Hearken unto me. And he said, you that seek the Lord. Are we not the people seeking him? He said, look to the rock from whence you are healed. And to the hole of the pit from whence you are healed. That is, go back and look at your source. Go back and look at where you came from. And, and I don't mean uh, Africa. That's not where you come from. Eh? Or Adrenity. Eh? You don't know where I do it. Is. You only know where it is about and uh, and uh, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the name of? Oh, there's this city. It starts with H. That I want to. Ara. You don't know. You only know where it is about and Ara is. <laughs> Amen. He said, "Look to your source. Look to your foundation. Look to where you come from. Are you following me?" And as God's children, where, where, where do we come from? We are the seed of Abraham. Amen. Are you getting my secret now? We are the seed of Abraham. Look at verse 2. He said, look unto Abraham, your father. Are you getting it now? And unto Sarah, that being, look at what I did with him. Look at how I brought him from nowhere. Are you following me? I'm putting him in charge. That's what he's saying. If you claim you are seeking after God, if you claim you are working with God, if you claim that God is your father, he says, stop first, look at where you come from. Amen? Look at Abraham, your father, and Sarah, your mother, for I called him alone, I increased him, I blessed him, and I increased him. So that's why we go back to Abraham. And I have a question today. Most of us have read the story of Abraham, what was that unique thing that we had of Abraham and God? The covenant. Huh? If you've read your Bible and checked your Bible, are you following me? One thing you notice is that word. God said, and I will make my covenant with you. Amen? So that's why we have to come back to the word covenant today. That word covenant was the unique thing between God and Abraham that we all know. And I want to show us a little bit about that. Uh, you know, we started reading from Abraham in Genesis 11, the last verse, to Genesis 12, it became significant. And in Genesis 13, verse 2, we read something about Abraham. And the Bible says that Abraham was very rich in cattle and in gold, right? We see all that. And Abraham began to make a lot. Before, in, in Genesis 14, we learned that Abraham's flock grew so much with Lot. That's why they couldn't go together. Are you following me? But 
The real covenant came in Genesis 17. That means, listen to me carefully, and please let me land first. Wealth, riches, prosperity, healing, those are not the covenant. Many people think the covenant is, I will prosper you. No, that's not the covenant. Those are results. Are you following me now? Those are the effect of the covenant. And many people today celebrate the effect, losing sight of the main thing. Without the main thing, the effect is zero. That's why many people don't get it. Give me, je- I, I need the preacher. Would you let me call what I want before you put it on the screen? Give me Genesis 17. Eh? I'm the preacher. I call it, Amen. I call it, then you show it. Amen. (laughs) I want you to hear me carefully. Abraham was rich. Abraham was wealthy. Of course, he had started his work with God. Don't misunderstand me. I just want to show you something clearly. But that was not the real deal. What is the covenant? Genesis 17 verse 1. Let's start. And God... When Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the almighty God, right? Walk before me and be thou perfect. And if you do, verse 2, and I will make my covenant with you, and as a result of that covenant, I will multiply you exceedingly. But what is the covenant? No, go to verse 7. What is the covenant? Now, everybody, up. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto them. Did you see the word? The covenant is to be your God. He has to be your God first before he can prosper you. Do you get my point? He has to be your God first before he can heal you. But many people put the healing first Put the prosperity first, put the success first, and forget that we are talking of God being our God first. I'm going to take a series when I finish this on what it means to be a God to you. Are you getting my point now? If you are not saved, can you claim me? Are you following? You have to be saved first. It has to be your God first. Huh? And that is more important than the healing. It's more important than the prosperity. It's more important than the good success. It's lordship of your life that you serve first. As a matter of fact, the healing, everybody look at me, the prosperity, the good success, they are the results of you being your God. He said, when I'm your God, and the word means to take care of you, and you follow me, as your God, you get my point now, as your God whom you worship, whom you serve, then as your God, he serves you, he watch he, he, he sorry, he takes care of you, he provides for you, he protects you. Yeah. But everything begins from where? Yeah. Are you following? So my question is, who is your God? Is he really God to you? Do you really see him as God? That's the covenant. To be a God unto you and to your seed. And we are the seed of Abraham. Amen. Amen. I love a Psalm, Psalm 48. You won't see it in your notes because I was just enjoying myself this morning. I've already sent you my message was last night. Where did you drop it? Are you using your notes? Psalm 48. Let's go to Psalm 48. Amen. Amen. Good. That shows you you are not a preacher because you are jumping the ones I gave you before. This one is not in the notes. Amen. We start from verse 11. I will send you this after. It was revealing. He says, let Mount Zion rejoice. Who is Mount Zion? We are. God's people. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgment. Because you are a good God. Are you following me? Watch me. Please keep rolling it for me. Because you are a good God. Verse 12. He said, walk about Zion. Exercise yourself. In it and go about her, explore the benefits 
explore the beauties. Are you following me? Of Zion. And tell it to the towers thereof. That means stand on the tower. You know the tower? And shout it to everyone that cares to hear. When you see the beauty of Zion, when you see the glory of Zion, when you explore the prosperity, the wealth, are you following me? Of Zion. Watch carefully what I'm saying. When you express, let's just speak a nation. And for safety's sake, I'll pick it up because if I pick another country, they will be angry with me. So let's say you talk about Ethiopia now. You say, Oh, look at all the mountains. Are you following me? Look at all the hills. Look at the beauty. Of course, he said coffee came, came from there. We are still angry over that one. Look at the coffee we gave the world so that they don't sleep again. Look at all of these things. That's what he's trying to say about Zion. You get my point? Look at the beauty of Zion. See how they are protected. See how they are provided for. See how they are kept. See how he heals them. See how he does not allow anything to. He says, so shout it up. What are they to shout? Verse 13. No, 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 don't jump, don't jump. Still stay in verse 13. Mark you where her bulwarks. Consider her palaces. Are you getting the picture now? See her beauty, see her wealth, and that he may tell it to the generation following. What are you to tell? Verse 14. Tell them. Can you read it with me? Louder, please. No, that's not loud enough. God That's what you tell them. This God, when you see all the beauty, watch my language. You see the beauty, you see the gold, you see the diamonds, you see the decorations, you see the wealth, you see their strength, you see their victories. You now tell the world, my God is a good God. Because this God is the reason for all this. Without this God, are you following me? There is no wealth, there is no beauty. You get my point? There is nothing to celebrate. He said, tell it. For this God is our God forever and ever. And he will be our guide even unto death. So, what do we celebrate? We celebrate the fact that he is our God. First. You know, that's what David, uh, Joseph said. How can I do this and sin against my God? Is my God is first. You get the picture? Are you following me? Oh, that's what Daniel said. No. We can't hit this because our God forbids us to hit it. It's our God for us. No, we won't bow to your to your to your what do you call it? Your high God because we have our God. Amen. I said amen. amen. He said this God is what? Our God. So the question is, is he really your God? You need to find out. We will explore that when I finish this series. What it means that this God is our God. So listen to me carefully. He has to be first your God before he can prosper you. He has to be first your God before he can heal you. He has to be first your God before he can provide for you. He provides for his own. You get my point? Jesus said, Ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, be healed? The only reason she is qualified for healing is because Abraham was her father. Do you get my point? So what qualifies you for success in the first place, what qualifies you for the wealth in the first place, what qualifies you for the prosperity, for the healing, is because he's your God. So you never lose sight of that. That is the one you secure first. Amen. I said amen. Amen. That is what you secure first. He has to be your God first in every sense to heal you. To deliver you, to promote you, to bless you. Amen? Amen. That's what we are talking about. It is our covenant with Him. That is our God. Amen? Amen. And that covenant that God made with Abraham is to be a God unto you. Many of us Christians, we don't even know what it means. So we live our lives the way we see it. We don't know we have a God over us to whom we report to. Are you following me? To whom we submit to. The one we worship, that means you give all to. It rules your life. That's why he has given us his word. What to do, where to go, what to say. Are you following me? So is a God unto you. Jesus is Lord. Never you forget that. 
God started that with Abraham in the word covenant originally from the original concept that they got the word covenant you know what it means? It means a coming together. So when you say we have a covenant with God it means we have become one with God. You get my point? And in Christ we are one with God. We have become one family. You get my point now? We are one family. We have become one with God. When you have a covenant with God, you are one with God, you have access to Him, He has access to you. Amen. It's, it's, a, it's a coming together. And that's what Jesus prays. I pray, Father, that they may be one. Even as I and you, we are one. You remember, it's a coming together. Two or more parties coming together, make a contract. Agreeing on promises, stipulations, privileges, and responsibilities. And that's exactly what happened with Abraham to the point that when God was going to destroy Sodom, the covenant for me is that God will do something like that without telling Abraham. Are you following me? And God said, No, I can't do this without telling Abraham. He's one with me. And Abraham stood with God for them, if you know the story. For this God is a God. You know that song? I think Mrs. Tai wish you know that she's an Old Testament Christian. Thank you. Forever and ever He will be my God. You know all these New Testament Christians don't know that one. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. You teach your husband that one when you get home. Uh, it's a New Testament Christian. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to hear, to hear me again. The covenant, Genesis 17 verse 7, is to be a God to you. Amen. To be a God to you and to your seed afterwards. And this covenant covers everything. Spiritual, physical, mental, everything. And if you check these stories in the Bible, you notice one thing with Israel. As long as the children of Israel were with God, I mean, in league with God, nobody could defeat them. Even Ethiopia came with one billion chariots. They like fighting. They've been fighting for long. Eh? Apostle Mulat, or you want me, you forgot. You are pretending as if you are not hearing what I'm saying when I mention that. In 2 Chronicles 15, the Bible says the Ethiopian came with a million chariots against Asa, and they fled. And I always tell people that's where Marathon started from. <laughs> what am I saying? As long as you are in league with this God, you are covered. You get my point? No, instead they were only defeated anytime they are, God is not with them. You get my point? No matter how small they were, as long as they make sure their covenant is functional, nobody will defeat them. And it's the same with you. Amen. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Glory to God. Look at it. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. From verse 13. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man. Can I hear you say no man? I said, can I hear you say no man? No man. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He suffered no man. That's go to verse 14. I've left that. He suffered no man to do them wrong. In that, the word suffer means he did not allow anybody to hurt them. Yea, he removed kings. He removed kings for their sake. Saying, verse 15, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That means don't move near my people. They are one with me. <laughs> you get it, boy? They are in covenant with me. So he stood for them. He did not allow anybody to hurt them. He did not allow any situation to go against them. That's what we are talking about. And that promise was given to Abraham and his descendants. Jesus is Lord. We are the seed of Abraham. That one we all know. And that's why God told them, if you be willing and obedient, you shall hear the good of the land. Obedient to what? Obedient to the terms of the covenant. Obedient to his word. Amen. Find out what the covenant says. 
Put the word of God first in your life. Stand on his word. Do it as he commands it. And he, like he said in Genesis 17 verse 2, and I will make my covenant with you, and if you follow the terms of the covenant, I will multiply you exceedingly. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. I say Jesus is Lord. All the time. So the resultant effect of the covenant is that God will secure you. Amen. Establish his goodwill concerning you. Prosper you, pro protect you, promote you, provide for you. Those are the resultant effects. When you stand in the covenant, then it manifests those ones to you. Amen. When you stand in the covenant, as a true worshiper, that's what Jesus said. He said that God is seeking for the true worshippers, true one, right? Not false. Huh? True worshippers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And what is truth? Thy word is truth. Amen. When he finds such, he manifests himself through them. Hear what the servant of Abraham said, Genesis 24, verse 34. See this total resultant effect of the covenant. When um, uh, Abraham sent his servant to go get a wife for Isaac. And when he got there, Genesis 34, uh, verse... Sorry, Genesis 24, verse 34. He said, The Lord had blessed my... Go to verse 35. I am Abraham's servant. Verse 35 says, And the Lord has blessed my master greatly. Who blessed him greatly? The Lord. I didn't say you should whisper it. Who blessed him greatly? The Lord. Can you see this title of it? It's even turning. The Lord. Eh? It's the tongue. You too, let your tongue turn. Don't be talking like how you talk to him every time. In America now. The Lord. <laughs> Amen. He said, the Lord has blessed. Are you following me? Who blessed? The Lord. That's why he's your, he has to be your God first. You have to be committed to him as your God first. You understand me? You worship him, you serve him, you do his will as your God first. Amen. The Lord has blessed my master greatly. And he's become great. Many people want to put the blessing before the Lordship. Do you get my point? No. We serve him God as God first. We submit to him as God first. We worship him as God first. We do what he says as God first. Amen. The Lord has blessed my master greatly and he's become great. And how did he get to that point? That's what we're talking about. The reality of the covenant. Amen. I said amen. So in your life, if I begin to close, you need to secure yourself in the covenant. See yourself first and foremost as a covenant child of God, as one in covenant with God. Find out what it means, we'll explore that. One in covenant with God. No. There's something that's happening every time I read it in, in Nigeria. Nigeria increases with more churches than factories. We have more churches than anywhere built in the world. But we are more corrupt than everybody in the world. Are you following me? More churches, more corruption. Does, should that go together? Because people don't know that this is my God force. It has to be for my God force. Just as I said, I can't do that and sin against my God. Are you following me? Daniel said, I can't hit that and sin against my God. So many people are just in the church and live the life the way they want. That's not in the covenant. Are you following me? Covenant people are world changers. Amen. Covenant people are to stand wherever they are walking, everybody should know this one is different. Huh? Everybody should see the light of God in this one. Everybody should know if we are planning it, he will join us. <laughs> are you following me? They, they, you, know, you know they said something about, about Daniel. He said, we can't find any occasion against Daniel except it has to do with his God. That means everywhere Daniel went, we tell them, look, I'm not part of you. I'm a child of God. 
As a child of God, I don't do this. I don't talk like that. I don't go there. And you understand me? That's what the Bible is saying. Jesus is Lord. So is he really your God? And are you really living as a covenant child? Walking in the covenant. It is in doing what he says. And that's why we have to discover the terms of the covenant. I remember the language God made when um, Moses was on the mountain getting the tablets, the two tablets of stone, and by the time he came back, uh, Aaron had made a golden calf for them. The Bible is used in language. He said that the people, when Moses saw that the people were naked, they were not naked in terms of clothing, but they were naked because they had gone out and no much no covering. He said because Aaron has made them naked. And you follow me? When it's just like Adam, when God leaves, you are empty. That's why you secure your God first. Your walk with God first. Your life with God first. And then you do it his way. Look at the popular scripture we read from Proverbs 23, verse 26. He said, my son, let give me your heart, he said. And then, number two, let your eyes observe my ways. You give him your heart, you live according to his ways. And then the effect of that results in wealth, in healing, in prosperity, in good success. Hallelujah. Doing it right and living right is what we are talking about. Walking in his way is what results in blessing. Psalm 128 verse 1. Blessed is everyone. Can I hear you say everyone? Everyone. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord walking in his ways. Amen? Amen. Blessed is every Psalm 128, if you are still here with us. Psalm 128, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord. Did you get it? He didn't say blessed is everyone that goes to church. <laughs> he said, Blessed is everyone that does what? Fears the Lord. And what does he mean? He says, And I mean walking in his ways. Walking in his ways. But then a lot you find it difficult to pay tithe and you say you are walking in his ways. It doesn't work that way. Walking in his ways. Carry on forgiveness? Ah, no. Blessed is everyone that feared the Lord. Walking in his ways. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why the Bible says will come to church to learn of his ways. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. That's all we come to church to do. To learn of his ways. It shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and above all the hills. Isaiah chapter 2. I believe verse 3. And many people shall go and say I've read verse 2. Come ye, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, to the church, so that he will teach us of his ways. Teach us how to live with this God. Teach us of his ways. And when he taught us, we will walk in his paths. It's a path to dwelling. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary, the Sabbath says. So we come to learn of his ways so that we can walk in his paths. We come to learn of his ways. So he taught us Oh, give. He taught us forgive. He taught us love. He taught, and finally, we are learning of his ways. Then we go into the world and we walk in his paths. And they say, oh, this is why I'm different. He said, yes, I'm not, I'm not one of you. I'm not like you. I'm one with God. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Before you say it anywhere they found you, they should know that God is with you. They should know that you are living for him because they see the reality of it in your life, in your speech, in your doings. Glory to God. Amen. Need to be taught. And finally, I'll repeat this. 
mind God in everything you do. Because God is a covenant keeping God. Psalm 89 verse 14. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth out of my mouth, God says. Glory to God. My God. God is a covenant keeping God. And God's covenant is in force. And as you do what he says, and engage it with the force of faith, the covenant will produce in your life. So stop minding what the people say or are saying. Mind God and his word. Stop minding the situations in the land. What is going on? Where you are. Mind God, your God, your own God. That's the key. Mind your God and his word. Stop minding what the enemy is saying. Mind your God. And I tell you all the remaining days of your life, the enemy will not be able to molest you. Amen. Amen. Mind God. When they say this is how everybody is doing, they say, no, this is why God says we should do it. Oh, you go to church too much. I've, I've not done enough. David was going to church 10 times a day. And like the bishop would say, he's thinking, he was thinking, carrying out his assignment. And he's following me. Don't mind what the people say, mind your God. Don't mind how they present it, mind your God. Do it the way your God commands it. And then it will show up for you. This year, God will show up for you. Amen. I said, this year, God will give you rest. Amen. When the children of Israel in 2 Chronicles came down, I believe that's chapter 15, and made the covenant with God, He gave them rest round about. Amen. When He brought Him back into their lives, He gave them rest. Fought their wars for them. Provided for them. Secured them. I want you to make up your mind to go with God this morning. And you'll be able to say like the song we sang in Psalm 48, for this God is our God. He said, tell it to the mountains thereof. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad. You see? That's what technology does. He wants to show us his food is uh, up to date. Amen. Let Mount Zion rejoice. He said, tell it to the towers thereof. For this God is our God and he will be our guide even unto the end. Is he your God? Yes. Are you ready to let him be your guide? Yes. Rise up on your feet with me and reaffirm the same. He is my God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, yes. the God of Jacob. Jacob, the father of my Lord Jesus Christ is my God. And I stand to reaffirm the say for the world to hear today that this God is my God. And he will be my guide even unto the end. He's my God. I choose to serve him. I thought you would be saying that for yourself also. I choose to serve him. I choose to worship him. I choose to put him first in my life. I have a covenant with him. He's my God. Is my God. And in his covenant, he's promised to protect me. He's promised to secure me. He's promised to prosper me as I walk in his ways. Lord, grant me grace to walk in your ways this morning. Grant me grace to walk in your ways. Show me the way to go this morning. You know, David will always play, show me thy ways, O God. Leave me in a plain path. Lord, show me the way to go. Open up my heart to the reality of your ways that I be walking in. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, the Lord of heaven. Yes. We we'll bless your name this morning. Yes. Thank you for the word of life. Amen. Lord, I commit everyone into your hands this morning. I want everybody to say, the God of Abraham is my God. The God of Abraham is my God. The God of Isaac is my God. The God of Isaac is my God. The God of Jacob is my God. The God of Jacob is my God. God, the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, is my God. God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, Christ is my God. I am His. I am, his. I am committed to Him. Committed my, to him. Life my life is in His hand. He is my God. He is my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. And thank you, Lord, for being the one that watches over us. Thank you for being our source. Lord, I tap into that source this morning. And I speak the liberty and the prosperity of these ones. And of everyone hearing me. I tap into that source. And I speak the health and the healing of everyone hearing me. 
I tap into that source and I seek to take the kill of everyone hearing me this morning in the name of Jesus. Be cured of every affliction. Be delivered of every, 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 every hold of sorrow. In the name of Jesus. Because this God is your God. He has made adequate provisions for your welfare. So you will not lack. I say you will not lack. Whatever is required is supplied right now. Whatever shortfall you have is made up by him for you right now. You will not lack in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. I say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Put your hands together as you take your seat. Hallelujah. I said, put your hands together only. Apostle Taiwo was clapping. Eh? Okay, can you put your hands together right now? Amen. Jesus is Lord.